Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so I have Carol Bauer on the line, and she's Executive Director of Girls Athletic Leadership Schools of Denver, also known as GALS Denver. Uh, Carol, welcome to the show. Thanks so much, Adam. Great to be here. All right, Carol. So uh, I'm excited to, I've been looking forward to this interview. First off, Uh, I'm excited to bring you on the show and also to announce your participation in our upcoming book. So I'm really excited to get into, into your writing. Well, just for the, and by the way, for everybody listening, book's not live yet. Today will be a little bit of a teaser on that side of things, but we will be bringing, don't worry, we will be bringing Carol back on once the book's live and we'll do a deep dive into her writing. Um, But today we're definitely going to do a deep dive into Gals Denver. Um, So Carol, we'll start this episode the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. Uh, So Carol, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Carol, what mission matters to you? I love that question. And I love that you're called Mission Matters because I think mission is at the core of all good things, right? So I think the mission that matters to me most is the mission of Gals Denver. So we Mm -hmm. empower all students to succeed academically, lead confidently, live boldly, and thrive physically. And Mm -hmm. I love that that is part of a public school mission. Amazing. And and love having an educator on the line today. And I, I want to know what it's like running to school. So we'll talk about that. But but where did where did all this start for you? Like whether whether it was getting into, you know, the nonprofit side of things or schools and education in general, like where did it start for Carol? Yeah, I, you know, um, it started in college. I was always or in even before that, I was always someone who did volunteer work um, for a lot of different reasons. At first it was because I thought that's what everybody did. And then it really started to focus in on me wanting to make change in the world and um, like focus on social justice and create opportunity and equity where we weren't seeing that. And um, I mean, the story goes that I was working in a work study job at college and um, there was the executive director of a national nonprofit organization brought an internship job posting to make photocopies to post up around the campus. And I was like, what is this? And so um, applied for that internship and I've been working in nonprofits on the national level, um, on the local level, on the philanthropic giving level, on the direct service level, the advocacy policy level for about 30 years now. So um, that's how that started. And then I think really quickly um, into my professional career, Um, Mm -hmm. I just really believed in the idea that everyone is a lifelong learner and that Mm -hmm. education happens to us all every day. And we don't necessarily have to be in a school building for us to be learning. And I think that um, humans are, we're sort of unfinished beings our whole Mm -hmm. lives, right? Like we always have room to grow and learn and change and Mm -hmm. um, empower and all of those things. So that's that's how I skipped into it 30 years ago. Uh, it's a great story. And I want to, I want to stay there for a bit. Um, and like, cause I know there's people that are watching. So, cause you've managed to make a, a successful career out of it. I mean, you have a lot of different experiences and I know there'll be some people that are watching this that are maybe a little bit earlier in their career, or they're just, they're just kind of getting started and getting it figured out. And so if you were to talk to that Carol, that was maybe just getting started in the nonprofit yeah. or education side of things, like what kind of advice would you give her, you know, with the benefit of hindsight, that we can all learn from. Yeah. I mean, I think um, I think the thing that I've learned the most is that um, there's something serendipitous about finding mm. your next place in the world, right? Like when you're yeah. looking for a job, they also have to be looking for you. Or when you meet someone, they're also meeting you, you know? So there's a lot of um, serendipity in that. And I think, so I think that I would say like, mm-hmm. you just need to sort of lean into what's happening around you and, and yeah. things will come to you. Um, and, but also you need to look for it. So like, make sure you're, um, paying attention to what you passionate about and just Mm -hmm. seek out, um, different opportunities that might be in that area. And I think the other thing is that, um, I never was looking for the perfect job. Like I didn't have an image of that in my brain because I don't know that 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 exists necessarily. And I think any job provides you the opportunity to give of yourself, to learn from where Mm -hmm. you're at. Um, 
And so I know that I took a couple jobs that I was like, ah, is this really what I want to do? And I ended up learning so much about either what I wanted to do or not do or what my strengths were or what needed, what my growth edges were, right? Um, That it's like every opportunity in life is going to give you something and you just lean into it and take it. Uh, lots of pearls of wisdom in that one, Carol. So I, I completely agree with you. And and going even above that, like in terms of um, like the space, what you just said, that's just life advice. I don't care if you're going, yeah. in, if you're an entrepreneur, yeah. nonprofit, I don't care what you're doing. Like, I think, especially when we think of those early years, and as you're saying this, I'm like, yeah, I probably did a couple of things where I'm like, okay, I'm not doing this for life. But then looking back, you're like, oh my gosh, it could have been the manager there. It could have been the process you learned. It or I'm been so glad I did that. Help. Yeah. yeah. It could have been anybody. It could have just been the experience. And I think about some of those and I'm like, man, those I didn't, you know, looking back, those were some defining moments and you know, some of my beliefs. And I'm like, I'm so grateful for those experiences. So, so thank you for sharing that first off. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm going to, I, I do want to touch on this. And as I said, we'll, we'll go into it deeper another time, but um, you, the book. So I'm really excited to have you in the book and to, and to publish your writing. So um, just, just broadly speaking, what are some of the ideas and concepts that you hope the readers will get out of, out of your writing? Yeah, I, I love that question. Um, you know, when I initially came across Mission Matters, I, I wondered if I had anything to say um, if in a book. And I had read different chapters that were just like lovely pearls of wisdom, as you had yeah. stated. And I think, you know, I think the core is that I I have done a lot of different things in my career, but right now I'm an executive director of a six through 12 school, I'm a middle school and a high school. And so I spend my days in a school building with adolescents who are like growing and being adolescents, right? And learning. <laughs> and, um, you know, and it's super dynamic and it's, um, it's full of humanity. And so that was like the word that came to mind that I was like, wow, middle schools are full of humanity. Like there's yeah. so much that happens on a day-to-day basis with the adults and the young people. So when I was thinking about the chapter, I just really thought about like, what are, what are those great life lessons that I feel like come at me all the time, every day, working in a school with adolescents? Um, yeah. And um, yeah, so I just, I, I dipped into that and shared a few stories and a few things that I think carry over into the business world, into um, the public mm-hmm. sector world, the private sector world. Um, and that that are also, you know, good, great lessons from being an adolescent and going through that time period of our lives. So, Carol, when I was preparing for this, I was trying to put my myself in the mindset of like uh-huh. being in sixth grade again. Right. Yes. And I had yeah. I had this realization and I don't know if this is true. I mean, you have to ask some of your students or just tell me, like, I don't know. When we're that age, we already think because we we have our perception of ourselves. So like I thought I was an adult then. Like I was thinking <laughs> about I did. No, for, I don't know if it's just me, but I had my first little well, not first, many businesses in probably by then. But I remember selling t-shirts and like airbrushing shirts yeah. and all these other things. And I'm like, I had a little business going, and that was a really serious thing to me in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. And I was thinking to myself, I'm like. I had no perception that I was that I was like this little kid. I must have looked so funny. So when yeah. you say there's like there's like you know there's humanity or there's like things going on to me like for the kids like that's that reality like not saying they're adults of course so I'm I'm, I'm kind of joking at the yeah. same time but like it's such an important like pivotal age to for, for development. Am I off on this or? Oh my gosh, it's it's the it's the key point, I think, of development, right? Like their little brains are happening, they're living in their (laughs) limbic system. So everything is about like risk and reward and joy. And um, they live very much in the present. Of course, this is generalizing, but, um, Mm -hmm. of course, you know, so whatever's happening right in front of them is usually the most important thing or one of the most important things. Um, And they're also like figuring out their identity. Like, I guess you already knew you were an entrepreneur, but not everybody knows that when they're 11 or 12 or 15 or 35. Um, (laughs) So they're figuring out, you know, like, what is important? What do I want to, you know, where am I? What is, where do I want to stand with my values? And, um, Mm -hmm. and they're questioning a lot of that. And they're also like really observing that in their peers and in the adults that surround them. And so that's a huge part of it as well. Um, And I also think, you know, it's funny whenever I say adolescence, or do people remember your adolescent self? A lot of times people are like, ooh, ah, ah," you know, (laughs) and I'm like, no, adolescence can be so like, it's so messy. That's what makes it joyful. Um, 
Yeah. And that it's just, you know, in every moment you can, you can pull something that you'll be able to use for the rest of your life. And so, yeah. But the other thing about working with adolescents is like how important it is to be intentional with Mm -hmm. them um, and with yourself as an adult and with adult peers in the building. And I think that that's also like that Mm -hmm. huge lesson that transfers to us into adulthood is like, you need to be intentional about Mm -hmm. what you say, what you do, how you interact, like Mm -hmm. how you respond in every moment, you know? Yeah. And, and so much comes from that. Um, And you give so much back to community when you are intentional about who you are and, and how you are in community. Yeah, I, I get it totally. And I and, and like I said, in preparing for this, I was putting myself in that little kid Adam's shoes again. And I'm like, wow, yeah. I never I, I never realized like what an important time period that was in my life. You know, as adults, we older and older, we look at different things and we might and we don't maybe reflect that far back. <laughs> it's fun to reflect yeah. that far back and uh, and see yeah. what was going on in my head. Um, but I think there's also a great transition. So I do want to get into uh, Gals Denver. So you mentioned a little bit about it. I want to go further and i have some some other things that i just want to know like what's it like running a school um but uh yeah. tell us a little bit more about the school to start off with please yeah such an amazing special place so gals denver is the first and only um gender focused or single gender public school in the state and um the design of the school is a super unique school model so instead of you know thinking about how we could create space for adolescent young women primarily or or, um, gender non-binary students as well are Mm -hmm. part of our community. Um, Like how we can make space for them to be their best selves current Mm -hmm. in their current life into the future. Right. And so our founders, um, it started with this research around how connected your mind and body are. And so Mm -hmm. um, the idea that physical wellness and physical activity has so much impact on who you are um, and Mm -hmm. how you're able to show up in spaces. So the school model focuses um, with a movement-based pedagogy. So we all do movement in the morning um, together, adults and young people. And then we incorporate Mm -hmm. movement into um, the teaching of our lesson plans all throughout the day so that Mm -hmm. students know and understand that their their body can focus, it can intake information, it can process information. And then um, that combines with sort of like a powerful academic curriculum. And then Mm -hmm. sort of the third big thing that we combine is um, a focus on what we call positive gender focus. And that's really taking that whole child viewpoint and doing some really specific and strategic things around social emotional development, mental health, Um, leadership development, um, curiosity, um, joy, competition, um, you know, creating spaces where students can be exactly who they are and can explore who they want to be and grow into that. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so gals is, it's a, it's a pretty magical place. It's very high energy, um, always something happening at the school. And, (laughs) you know, the students, I often ask students, like, what do you think the secret sauce is, you know, of gals? What's, what makes it the way that it is? And, um, the number one thing that they always say is like, I just really feel like I can be myself here and everybody loves me anyway. And they love me because of it, you know? So it's like really, so instead of, um, the founders told me this once, like, instead of having like a, program or a school and then like adding little pieces of a program to it they actually like started from the beginning and fully integrated like what would it look like to have a school that integrated all of these things and made them just as important as the academic uh, development of young people because young people they're not just scholars right they're also they're also humans like growing and developing and there's so many needs that they have throughout adolescence that um, you know, if you have a little bit of a unique school model, you can really um, create some incredible growth opportunities for young people. Yeah, it, it sounds amazing. And I and I may have a, a bias also towards like exploring a, a new school model. So not saying you said this, because I know I know all the educators out there, their heart are, are in the children and they're regardless of what model um, they're operating under, like we're all trying to do our best out there, just like in business yeah. educators are doing the same thing. Like it's not an easy not an easy role, not an easy position. I think we all would agree with that. 
Um, but yeah. I, I was, I mean, I was a product of and when I, when I was thinking back about you know, Gals Denver and then my, again, middle school experience, I went to the first um, charter school in Michigan, uh, dating myself there. It was like, a, I think, Governor um, Engler project back then. And it was, and it was a completely different model. It was a different way of learning. And so I've always been a fan yeah. of, and my, I mean, my mother was in education for, I mean, as a, as a, as a counselor for, I don't know, 30, 40 years um, at, a, at another type of charter school or pilot school. So I've always kind of been really fascinated, interested in different models and seeing like the outcomes because I've seen the differences they've yeah. made in people's lives, mine, mine included, and just understanding yeah. that, you know, maybe some of the traditional model was designed for a time period that we're not exactly in anymore. This isn't, you know, industrial revolution anymore. We're not all um, graduating and, yeah. and moving on to factories, right? So a lot of the basis of what the original core school model um, was built on. So how do you see, um, and this, uh, how do you see this? So this, as kind of like a progression in the model, like in overall, because I think there's things that, you know, all, everybody learns from different people's models or different, I guess, systems and totally. business and education. Like, how do you see this as a progression? Yeah. I mean, the thing that I often say is that like, not every school is right for every student and yeah. named it, you know, there's a lot of different school models. I would really hope that um, public education continues to embrace the idea that a, a lot of different choices for families and for students, mm -hmm. you're going to be able to find a model that works and allows them to be successful. Mm -hmm. So like when we um, talk to families, you know, some of the things that they say is like, of course, I want them to learn. I want them to have the yeah. best academics they can possibly get. And good Lord, this is middle school. I want them to want to go to school and I want them to be happy. Mm -hmm. So like, can that also be part of what's happening? Because they don't come to school to learn. They come to school with their full brains and bodies and yeah. emotions and ideas and all of those things. So it's, you know, as an institution, mm -hmm. like we're, we're not just about mm -hmm. um, reading, writing, you know, advancing. We're hugely about that for sure. And that absolutely yeah. is a focus, but like there are things that you can do um, with a school model and um, by supporting really, I believe the most magical silver bullet in public education mm -hmm. is your front facing teachers and support staff in the buildings. I mean, they are yeah. the ones that make it happen. Right. And research tells us that if you have an amazing teacher mm -hmm. three years in a row, like your trajectory just goes incredible places. Mm -hmm. So like, what are we doing in public education to make sure that first our teachers are really viewed as incredible professionals that have a uh, that have an amazing craft that they continue to hone every day um mm -hmm. in addition to just having the hugest hearts i have ever of mm -hmm. people i have ever met right and like how can we surround them with an institution of public education that instead of mm -hmm. or that is as supportive as that it can possibly be right like of course yeah. we need benchmarks and we need to be compliant around certain things, but we don't need to be rigid and we need to mm -hmm. stop and slow down and remember that, you know, that school buildings are full of human beings, adult yeah. human beings, young human beings. And so I think that like the school reform, what people say that, you know, the charter school movement was part of that, mm -hmm. you know, some people love it, some people hate it, but really yeah. we're all here to like, support students to be their best selves and to be the most amazing humans in the world when they, mm -hmm. you know, when they leave public education and um, the adults who run schools are like the ones who are putting in so much blood, sweat, and tears to yeah. make that happen in the best way possible. So, yeah. So I yeah. fully believe in like, you can't, you meet the kids where they're at. Right. And you, yeah. um, you do whatever it is they need. And, and as an administrator in a public mm -hmm. school, like I need to give support to my teachers, my staff, mm -hmm. even my families with whatever they need to make sure students can be their best selves. And that looks a lot of different ways, but that's, that's really what it's about. That's the mission of our mm -hmm. schools. So you mentioned that, you know, uh, children are more than just scholars. And so this approach of, you know, the, the entire student and some of the other things that are either in the curriculum or otherwise, um, can you can you expand on that a little bit, just because I feel like that's a new concept to maybe some that will watch this, especially coming from, you know, an, an educator and administrator mm -hmm. <laughs> that, you know, students are more than just scholars. Like, can you expand on that? Yeah. So they're full human beings, you know, just like I'm more than a school administrator. Like I yeah. am a 
really good friend. I am a writer. I am, am somebody who's super curious. I'm a mom. I'm a daughter. I'm a sister. I'm all, you know, all of those things. Um, mm-hmm. I'm also on my own journey. Like I am, I'm not finished learning. I'm a learner. I'm a, you know, so yeah. I'm trying, I'm a role model, like all of those things. Right. Mm-hmm. And so when young people come, they are scholars, they're there to learn. Yeah. And they're also a friend and a daughter and a sister and an auntie and a godmother and, a um, you know, like all of these things. And mm-hmm. I think um, there's a lot of lessons you can learn in academics. And there's also a lot to be said about being really intentional about mm-hmm. calling out social, emotional, relational development in young people, right? Like mm-hmm. during their adolescence, that's the magical time that that happens. So one of the things that we incorporated into our school model is we have a core curricular course. Um, mm-hmm. It's called GALS Series in our middle school and GALS Action in our high school. Mm-hmm. And it focuses on the development of young people. So it's actually like it's an academic class, but it focuses on social, emotional, and relational development. It focuses on problem wow. solving, on being in positive relationships, on um, restorative practices. It focuses on using your voice for for good. It focuses on advocacy, mm-hmm. um, on mindfulness, wellness, um, goal setting, um, intentionality, values, like wow. all of those things. And so like creating intentional space mm-hmm. where you can have those conversations with young people they build the vocabulary, right? They build the toolbox of what it means to disagree with someone and still be able to have like a really intentional and powerful conversation. Um, so that's like one way that we like really focus on making sure that our, our adolescent souls and, you know, brains are developing in a more way than just yeah. um, just the academics, although that is super important. That's not all that students care about. And we said in the beginning, Adam, like adolescent adolescents are generally living in the present, which yeah. literally means like whatever is happening directly in front of them. So mm-hmm. if they are hungry, if they're fighting with a friend, if they had a trauma in their family, if you know that there's something happening in the world that's bothering them, like all of that gets in the way of them being their best selves mm-hmm. and their best academic selves, right? And so if you have a school that can surround them intentional space to help remove some of those barriers, then they're going to be amazing mm-hmm. scholars and they're going to build this other toolbox to be amazing humans out into the world. Yeah. Wow. What a model. And as I'm listening to, I'm like, where was this when I was a kid? I can't even imagine at that age. Yeah like in, in my own development or anybody like that, like I know some of the people are watching this and, and listening to this and they'll think the same thing. Wait a minute, we're teaching, you know, you know, adolescents about mindfulness, about like things like this, like that's a whole nother, I didn't even really kind of understand or get into that concept, probably till college. I'm like, what sure. if I would have been thinking about that? And that's just my personal journey. Maybe others had right. it introduced earlier, but what if that was part of, you know, my experience at a younger age, just in general, like, wow, what an amazing thing that can yeah. do for emotional health for everything. Like that just opens up a whole nother perspective and, um, and way of thinking and being. So I- I'm jealous. I'm like, Hey, these kids, these days, they're yeah. spoiled. I don't know, Kara, I always spoil kids in the yeah. amazing, amazing <laughs> curriculum. Hold they on. Should be when spoiled. I was kid, you should spoil them. When I was a kid, I used to walk to school each way down. Well, I forgot how to do, I don't even know the saying, right? I don't even know, but I know I was both ways uphill. <laughs> down. Yeah. Downhill or uphill both ways. Right. <laughs> Uh, so, um, I mean, big fan of what you're doing though, seriously at, uh, at gals Denver. So, um, have to ask the, the question, what is it like, um, like being in charge of all, all those, all those kids and, and running the schools? How does that, how does it, what's that like? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a big. lot. It's, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> is it a lot? <laughs> I mean, it, it's a lot. I know. I'm like, where do you want to start? Like, you only asked me for a chapter. I could have written a book, right? No. So, I know. Um, a tome. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, too, it's, um, it's, it's focused on, um, positive gender focus. So it's, it mm. is an all girls space. We do have, um, gender non-binary and trans students who are huge and welcome in our community. Um, but that I think like lays this platform to create a space where there's just a lot of stuff that, that, um, gets removed. Like one of their students said, you know, Miss Bauer, like it, at the gal, in the gals community, I don't have to show off or be put off by anybody else. Like I can just wow. be myself and like, what that means in a space where students are trying to learn, like that's an amazing thing. But as an administrator, you know, 
public education is, it's a relational institution and it's sort of squished into a business model still. Like you were talking about how it, you know, free public education really started in the industrial revolution Mm -hmm. to make sure people had what they needed to either, you know, stay in the upper class or get into factories or whatever it was. And I think, you know, so it's, there's some institutional pieces around it that really, um, they limit the amount of what um, what I feel like we could really do as far as be innovative um, and flexible and provide what students need to to grow and not even providing what students need, also families um, and yeah. also the adults who work in school buildings. So like, you know, the way that it's funded, like what we're required to do at certain amount of minutes in the school and mm. um, and also just like being an administrator is this huge reminder of like students coming into school there with their whole selves. So if a school, uh, if a student has a family trauma or they're experiencing transientness or they're experiencing homelessness or whatever, like that's where they're at. And that's where we need to meet them. We can't be like, come on, let's go to algebra. You know, like you have yeah. to, yes, we'll get you to algebra and we'll get you to succeed there. But we also have to like acknowledge who you are and what you're going through and make sure yeah. that you have the lessons and the tools to be able to work through that. But, um, you know, if I had my druthers, I just, I think that there's so much opportunity right now, especially coming out of COVID and pandemic, where the world really saw in a different light, I think, what schools do for um, families, for young people, and for adults in the world. And schools had so much pressure on them to continue to like have learn the same way that they used to learn when yeah. teachers were asked hundred percent pivot their craft, you know, mm-hmm. like lesson plans in person are really different than lesson plans online and r- accountability and responsibility in a classroom is really different on, than it is on a, on a video screen. Right. So um, I don't know that we're at a place where we should really be continuing these conversations about school innovation, about school design, about what schools are expected to do for students and families, um, and how can we support them to be those things um, and make sure that students have what they need to be able to be successful and make sure that schools and teachers and support staff in buildings have what they need to be able to um, have (laughs) students and families be successful. So, but yeah, it's a trip. It's, Mm -hmm. there is joy. You know, we do Friday karaoke every day. I we have a skateboard club. I tell kids not yeah. to skateboard in the hallways all the time. <laughs> we have music and our bells, so we have singing and dancing spontaneously. You know, and then we also have like a lot of tears and like a lot of yeah. groups and a lot of restorative conversations. And mm-hmm. um, you know, it's it's we could write books upon books upon books about what happens just on a day to day basis at school. <laughs> wow, it sounds amazing. And it sounds, uh, I mean, to, to all the educators out there, administration, thank you. Thank you for all the hard work you're doing, because uh, it's not easy, but it's important. It's really important. And, uh, and I'm just a big fan of what you're doing over at Gals Denver. So I have to ask, I mean, um, what's next? I mean, what's next for you? What's next for Gal Denver? What's, uh, what's on the agenda? Yeah. I mean, what's next is I think to continue to figure out how to be the best we can possibly be every yeah. that we're open as a school, right? Mm-hmm. Like we don't take, we take it very seriously that we are part of, you know, these young humans that are in our building all day long. Mm-hmm. Like we are a critical part of their development. Mm-hmm. And if we don't give our all, um, mm-hmm. they won't be able to, you know, be all that they can be. Right. And so, um, I think what's next is to continue to fight the good fight, if we'll say Mm -hmm. that. So to continue to provide direct services, but also be a part of this conversation about what schools and teachers and families need out of public education. Um, I think we need to make sure that we're paying attention to, um, to teachers as like true professionals who have like a really difficult craft. Um, and, to continue to give them what they need to um, be their best selves and be able to uh, engage and um, really focus on every single student in the, in the building Um, and continue to focus on, you know, curiosity and kindness and watching for role models and moving forward. I mean, I think that there is a great space in public education for some continued school reform. Yeah. So I think we have to continue to to really um, think about how schools are 
oppressive to some students, how they're not inclusive to all students. I think we really need to have critical conversations about what's actually happening in the world um, and engaging parents and families in those conversations as well. But um, yeah, I think we need to stop thinking about school, excuse me, schools as the place where students Mm -hmm. just go to learn curricular content. I mean, schools are also where adults are learning, um, where we can make impact in the world and where we can really have critical conversations that will help to um, build incredible human beings who will be amazing leaders in our world. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Make, makes me feel good to know there's educators out there like you working on the on this day in and day out and uh, really helping to steward uh, that next generation because it's important. Um, yeah. That being said, if somebody is watching this or listening to this and they want to learn more about Gals Denver or to follow up and just uh, and follow your journey and Gals Denver journey, I mean, what what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, I mean, easiest way is to go to our website, um, galsdenver.org. So G-A-L-S Denver.org. And that's where you can find all of our contact information. We love when people come to visit our school. So we're used to, well, pre-pandemic, right? We would have groups of people from out of state that were looking and thinking about school models and um, come to visit our school and really like, I always want them to talk to the students and I'll just stand in the hallway and pull random students walking down the hallway and be like, Hey, this person doesn't know anything about gals. Tell them what you like, what you don't like, what you're getting from being in school here. You know? And I think giving young people that voice and also Mm -hmm. teachers that voice to say like, here's what I think works in education and here's what I'm seeing and here's where we need to be focusing. That's really, um, that's really the most important thing. So please come to Colorado, visit our school um, or invite us to come visit you um, and bring some students. And um, that's how we'll be connected. But easiest way is our website. We also have Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, all of those ways that you can follow who we are and what we're doing. That's awesome. And we'll put all that information in the show notes so that our audience can just click on the links and head right on over. And uh, speaking to the audience, if this is your first time listening to a Mission Matters episode or engaging with the platform, we're all about bringing out entrepreneurs, executives, and experts and having them share their mission, how they do what they do, um, why they do it, and what we can all learn and grow from their models and, uh, and expertise. So if that's the type of content that sounds interesting or fun or engaging to you, then we welcome you hit that subscribe button because we have many more mission-based individuals coming up on the line and we don't want you to miss a thing. And uh, Carol, uh, again, so excited to have you in the show. Really appreciate you coming on. Can't wait to bring you back on and to work on this book with you and uh, and to get the launch out there. So can't wait to the next time we get to work with each other. But for now, again, thanks again for coming on the show. Thanks, Adam. Pleasure. I look forward to the future. <laughs>